Hey, Instagram. Hey, Facebook. Give me a moment to pin the comment here on Instagram. Pin comment. There we go. So you guys, go ahead and share this out. Share this out. I am going to be giving some gems on the difference between one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching. Whether you're new to coaching or you're, uh, you're a seasoned coach, you want to really key in and pay attention to your business model. Here's the thing, coaching as a skill set and knowing what business model you're operating in are two different things. They're two different things, you guys. Let me see who I have on. Hey, Andy. Hey, Worshipper. Hey, Yashika. Hey, Walena. Stacy. All right, all right. Miss Jones, Chrissy, Jenny. All right, so one on one coaching. Hey, Loretta. One on one coaching versus group coaching. So we got Facebook down here. We've got Instagram right here. I'm going to give it to you guys real quick because I'm ready to relax for the weekend. It's supposed to rain. I mean, it's supposed to snow in Georgia this weekend. And I guess I'm going to be here for it. I guess I'm going to be here for it. I thought about earlier maybe we would go to Miami or Florida. Uh, not necessarily Miami for the weekend, but we decided to go ahead and stay here. Maybe we'll go next weekend. I don't know. So here's the deal, y'all. The world is no. Somebody says, "Is this pre-recorded?" No, ma'am. It's not pre-recorded. It's live right now. It's live right now. It's it's not pre-recorded. It's live right now. Okay. So this is for what was I saying? Oh, the coaching industry. The coaching industry is booming, you guys. If you are someone who has thought about getting into the coaching industry and you're like, I don't know, you know, I've been giving advice all my life. Um, I don't I don't know how to structure it. I don't know what to do. Listen up. If you're somebody who's been in the coaches, coaching industry for a minute and you're like, I am, I love what I do. But this all day meeting with clients all day, every day is draining me energetically and I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to turn. This is also for you. Hey, Lon. So here's the deal. When you first get into the coaching industry, you want to have, you want to create at least three to five clients before you go into a group coaching business model. You need to learn what client interaction is. You need to get comfortable with that exchange. You need to get comfortable with, with you and what you deliver and the transformation that is that is in on the inside of your program, all right? You have to be comfortable and confident in the space that you coach in. But baby, what I can tell you is that once you get five, six, seven, eight clients, you're going to be like, I cannot do this all day anyway, every day. Now, let me say this. If you're anything like me and you coach in a way that, that you really, really, really connect with your clients, hey, Mike, you really, really, really connect with your clients so that when you coach, you have sort of um, an outpouring of, of your spirit. And I'm not over-exaggerating this. Hey, Wasi, I'm not over-exaggerating. When you coach the way that I do and when you coach from a, from a spirit-led place and an impactful place, then when you get off the phone or off Zoom with a client, when you have an exchange with a client, you feel like you have just worked out because you have because you are a vessel and it came through you, right? So you're not, here's the deal. You're not going to be able to do that all day, every day. So you have to understand right now, right here, right now, that you're going to have to go to a group coaching business model at some point. So I am here as the group coaching queen that teaches that. I am here to show you how to do it and the pros and cons of why you should do it. Uh oh, my phone is acting crazy. All right. Why you should do it. Now, here, here we go. One-on-one -on -one coaching. One -on -one, before I get into that, let me let you guys know I'm having a five-day challenge to teach the entire framework. I'm going to give you the why tonight, why you need to move to it. But if you want five days of step-by-step-by-step, 
to moving to a group coaching business model, I've pinned it in the comment, groupcoachingblueprintchallenge.com. I'm having the challenge January 24th through 28th. It goes down. The last time I did it was November. It went down. The people that I had in that challenge are winning big. They're going at it. They, I gave them the complete structure. But for tonight, here we go. Actually, let me, let me type it in Facebook really quick. Give me a second, Instagram. All right, there you go, Facebook. That's where you can get the link. Y'all, y'all already know it's a $97 ticket and it's a $297 ticket. The $297 is the VIP. You get to spend an extra 30 minutes with me each day. Y'all, listen, I don't hold nothing back. I give you all the gems. I give you all the gems. So just be VIP. I could say a whole bunch of stuff, but it's just not even necessary. Just just decide right now that we, we do VIP things. It's 2022. We don't, we don't do general. We're not general. Nothing around here is general. So decide nothing around you is general. Create that energy. Create that space. Do your thing. That ain't general. Just saying. All right. So one-on-one -on -one coaching. Y'all with me? Say yes. All right. One-on-one. -on -one, it may, it's great. But there's a certain element of your, your client feeling isolated. We'll just go ahead and say it. There's a certain feeling of your, your a, a certain element of your client feeling isolated. They'll come to you. They'll exchange with you. Um, you'll teach them what you're teaching them. But they miss out on the community that is created in group coaching programs. You want to create that community so the so so that your clients will feel like I'm surrounded by people that are just like me. They're either struggling with the same thing I'm struggling with, and not everybody in the coaching program is struggling. Don't don't get me wrong, but they're either battling struggling with the same thing that the next person is struggling with. Hey, Charlene, or they are trying to get to the next level of something that the other people are getting to. So when you create a community of people, it just helps your clients go further faster. Real talk. It helps your clients go further faster. Um, being, being able to see someone that's going through it too. And so when they, when they slide back or when, when they wake up one day and they're not feeling as good as, as, as they did when they first started, come on y'all, we all know. Then when you first start something, and my phone is trying to turn. Ooh, ooh, don't do that phone. When you first start something, let me fix this a little bit. Okay, yeah, I think that's tighter. When you first start on a, a mission to do something, um, you, you're you all gung-ho. It's like the first of the year at the gym. You're all gung-ho. But as time goes on, you're not as dedicated. Come on, right? Truth, truth be told, say yes. You're not as dedicated as you were when you first started it. But when you have a community, yes, Lon, Lon's in, in several of my communities. She said it was a community for me. Lon, Lon let them know the, the people in the community were able to, to be there and push each other and hold each other and lock arms. So that's one. Two, with one-on-one -on -one coaching, you're going to have to do multiple calls a day, every single day, to even begin to earn a decent income. And so even if you are charging your clients a good amount of money, and you should because that allows them to show up differently, but we'll talk about that inside of the five-day challenge, groupcoachingblueprintchallenge.com. When you charge them a decent amount of money, you're still not going to be able to work full-time. It's harder to get a full-time salary out of that and many of the, the coaches that come into my community, they want to be full-time coaches. I had two coaches this week resign from their job, too. Two of my two. There's one right there. Hey, Tava. Tava turned in her notice just this week, y'all. Just this week. Tava, if you want to come on, just send me a request and we can talk about it. All right. So it's multiple one-on-one -on -one calls a week. And so, I mean, a, a day in order to amount to the, uh, in order to amount to how much you need to make it a full-time salary. But if you were putting those people in a group, 
it's easier because whether you're spending that one hour with a bunch of people or you're spending that one hour with one person, you're going to be able to impact more people, increase your influence, collapse the time that it takes you to reach that amount of people and collapse the time it takes you to generate a decent revenue, okay? Number three, with one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, I've already encompassed it. You're not generating enough money and you get capped on clients and um, income much. Oh, oh, there's Tava. All right, Facebook, I'm going live with Tava. I'm going to make sure you guys are able to hear her. There she is. Hey, Tava, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing fantastic this Friday evening. Yes. Man. Okay, let's talk about it. Let me give them three three key points really quick. Really, okay. really quick. Okay, so we were talking about one-on-one -on -one coaching versus group coaching. So I'm going to give you guys these three, and then I want to hop over to Tava, who turned in her notice, y'all. She turned in a whole notice to a whole job that she's been working at for years. We're going to talk about Y'all drop some fireballs. Y'all Y'all tell Tava congratulations. All right. The, the, um, the keys of group coaching is, well, the, the positive things in group coaching is you put your clients in a very supportive environment. When you can put your clients in, a, in an environment where they are really thriving off of each other, it just makes them go further faster. Two, you can collapse the amount of output that you have as the coach. Your delivery is collapsed because you're meeting it for one hour. The way I teach my clients, you're meeting for one hour um, once a week with your, with your group of people. And then three, you impact more clients in less time and increase your income. All right, you guys, really quick, I'm having a five-day challenge. You can go over to groupcoachingblueprintchallenge.com to sign up for that and you want to get the VIP. Now, Tava, Tava, Tava. I call her Lava Tava <laughs> I just love her name. So Tava, let the people know what it is you, you do for work right now and you won't be doing any more, but just take them through the thought process of what you were struggling with and what made you finally make the decision. Okay, so I am a leader in a healthcare organization. Um, I am a super nerd, as I call myself. I'm a trained Six Sigma black belt. Um, so I do process improvement and, and lean work. And um, I moved into a leadership role. And um, we had a coaching program at work. So I was coaching executives. And that's really where my passion was. And um the spreadsheets and the all that stuff, like I'm good at that. And I tell people just because you're good at something and you excel at it doesn't mean that's where your gift is. You know, I was getting all the employee of the whatever month, quarter, whatever, mm -hmm. but that that's not what set my soul on fire. Helping people figure out their path um and what made them um smile is what made me smile and so I struggled with it and I was always on your lives and I've been <laughs> in your programs and you've been in my ear for a long time <laughs> and um I be working in the hospital just being in that setting with COVID and you know surge after surge after surge it's been a struggle to to deal with mentally and um I really I went out on FMLA for surgery, and while I was out, I realized how burnt out I actually was. And um, I came back to work, and I was just like, I, I can't do this. I have options. Right. And um, I, I heard you in my in my ear. <laughs> Girl, you got options. Yes. And um, I, I crunched the numbers. I turned in my resignation, and I will say that when you make a move, God will make a move because ever since then doors have been opening and I know that it was because I trusted him and put my faith in the next level that he did that. So thank you for the push. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Let me give my disclaimer. Now I didn't tell nobody to leave their job. Y'all. I didn't tell nobody. She did to not. <laughs> I didn't tell her to leave her job. I just, we just had conversations 
over a good period of time about options that that many of us have. I can't say all because I don't know all the people that follow me, but here, but when you have a for me, I was I'm an ex government employee. When you have a when you work in a corporate career, you typically have a 401k. The money in your 401k is your money, but people think of that as it's distant. It's not. This it's over there. You're not supposed to access it till later. Er, wrong. It's your money. You can access it. I can't say whenever you want, but yeah, whenever you want. There's there's a process that you go through, but you can pretty much put your hands on your 401k money pretty quickly. You want to navigate it correctly. You want to talk to your financial advisor. Let me give that that disclaimer. You want to talk to your CPA and all the things. But the point being, yes, Lon. You have options. So and later people, is not promised. Later is not, not promised. promised. Later, later no. is not even no. promised. You're saving no. it for later, but what if you could take a piece of it? We're not saying all of it. What if you could take a piece of your 401k? Imagine that. And you take a piece of it and you put it into something that you really want to do and you want to do as a career and you blow that thing up. All it is is investing in yourself. And then what happens when you took that 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 piece of money and then you put it over here, you invest it in yourself, doors begin to open up for you. And then you start looking at that 401k like, oh, only that much money had me captive? Like, all right, it wasn't but $250,000 in there, however much it is. There was only, there was only that much in there. I, I made that last month, you know? So you start thinking differently but until we get in circles like anybody watching this right now y'all are in our circle at this point right anybody watching this right now if you've never thought uh, if you feel stuck and you feel oh like oh my gosh I just I gotta get out of this I don't know what to do and you have a 401k you need to have a conversation with HR now again me and Tava didn't tell you to leave no we just said <laughs> that there's options that you need to realize exists. Now, I can speak from this point of view, and I'm sure Tyler can speak from this point of view, and she'll be able to speak on it more later. But it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that there, for me, there wasn't a certain amount of fear still, because you worked there at that place for so long. Yes, you know, you'll often hear me say, "I grew up in corporate. Corporate raised me. I went there straight out of college." So going there straight out of college and spending almost 20 years there, it, it, it messes with your mind. It messes with the identity that you've known for so long. So when you begin to, to even think about transitioning out, your mind is going to waffle back and forth. Can you talk about that, Tava? Because you're in it right now. I'm on the I'm other in side it right, of it. I'm, I'm in it. Um, and it has been moment to moment sometimes like am I doing the right thing is this the right thing what what if you know all these COVID surges what if I get COVID you know like uh, <laughs> every all these things you know if I get sick at least I'll still get paid like all of that is going through my mind but I know that that is just that's imposter syndrome and that is fear that I have um you know creeping in that I just have to have to work through I know that God didn't open up this door and all these other doors that have opened up for me to fail at this point. Right, so I right. have to work through this myself. Right. Yeah. And things will come up, but you know, sometimes y'all, and I might step on a couple of toes here. Sometimes I, sometimes I think we, we, we let the devil's voice be louder than God's voice. Yes. That yes. the devil, the devil controls that imposter syndrome. God doesn't, God doesn't do imposter syndrome. He knows who we are. He knows who he crafted us to be. He knows how he stitched our veins together. So imposter syndrome, and we all get a touch of it at some point, all, he, he, it doesn't come from God. It comes from the devil dressed up in different clothes. Yes, yes. He's dressed up in different clothes and he taps on your shoulder and he says, are you sure? Mm -hmm. What you, if? What if? Are you sure you want to do it? Well, what if? What if it doesn't work out? I just got, guys, I have a book coming out 
and I just read the, I just turned in, I just looked, got the, um, the copy back from the editor this morning and that line literally was in there. So I'm having a moment right now. I'm having a moment right now because that exact line was in there. What if it doesn't work out? What if I have to go back? In the book, I, I tell my story. It's called Million Dollar Identity. But in the book, I tell my story about the mindset that has to happen when you begin to take on a million dollar identity shift. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> Be aware, Tava. And it's control. I know what it is. It's control. Like, yes. I have an analytical mind. I've, corporate has raised me. I'm used to having the plan for everything and the risk assessment and all of that. So it's the corporate training that's got me like, what are the risks? You, you know, it's. Right. Yeah, it's, it's it's almost a um, it's almost a corporate level brainwash because I'm like I can never leave here, like I can't yeah. leave here, and I look back now and I'm like I really thought I couldn't leave. There was a time when I really thought that I could not leave, and now that sounds so ridiculous to me. It sounds so ridiculous, right? Because if you I'm had like, you you wouldn't have touched my life and all the other people's lives that you have touched. I wouldn't have carried out my divine assignment if I didn't take the leap, if I no. didn't take the chance. Being there, I could only I could only reach so many people. Right? Right. Yeah, beyond just leap. So what would you as we close, Tava, what would you say to someone who is thinking about betting on themselves and they just feel so heavy in the workplace? I would say think about the gifts and the talent that you have and the fact that that company will only give you 3% possibly based on what they think you're worth. And you're worth way more than that. And you're not really executing your gifts and your talents to their highest ability sitting in that cubicle or your home office or wherever you are. Your gifts are greater than that. Right. And it's worth the bet on yourself. Totally. Because you, if you have marketable skills, we're not going to say it's not going to work, but you can find another job. I mean, it, you're not stuck anywhere by no means. Yes, yes. they will have your job posted before your funeral. Before yes. your funeral. That's facts. Yes. yes. That's facts. And I'll tell a quick story and then we'll go. I remember the thing that really jarred me to, okay, I think I can leave. I think I can do this. Is I had, and it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's really funny now. I had put in a request to work from home. The assignments that I was working on at that time, and I was an analytical investigator. Uh, the assignments I was working on at that time and that season in my career is totally something I could have done at home. And so I put in a request to work from home. It's something that our headquarters in DC was doing. So it wasn't foreign to the agency. It's something that the agency does, not necessarily in my office, but it's got to start somewhere. I was in the Atlanta office, but our DC counterparts do, did it. So, and it's in our manuals, you know, it's in our, our um, corporate guide. So let me go ahead and request it. And I requested it and it was denied. They said, it's not possible. Here we are. <laughs> In a pandemic, and everybody's working from home, but it wasn't possible. Right. So who, who has the last laugh now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not possible. Now, I didn't leave because of that, but that, because I had almost a 20-year career, but that made me start thinking that I have given another adult too much control over my life mm -hmm. and I've got to do something about that I've got to redefine what success looks like for me because from the world standards I was already successful and I realized at that point that's not my definition of success when another adult gets to gets to gets to pull weight and gets to pull rank and have control over me in that way Yes. 
Yes. That day I thought it wasn't fair. I couldn't believe it. I was hurt. But here I am eight years later. And I'm good. You are you are better than good. <laughs> I'm, I, you are better than good. <laughs> I feel I feel I feel good. You know, I making a month what I used to make in a year. And I work from home. So on hey, your I, own terms. On my own terms. I don't have to ask anybody when I can take my kids to the doctor and I don't have to turn to no note when I get back. Right. That part. Okay. That part. <laughs> That part. Uh, so ooh, I gotta hurry up. You back. <laughs> yes. How much longer do you have? How much of a notice did you give? I gave thirty days, so I have like eighteen days left, and I'm off on Monday, so <laughs> that's not. Really... Oh, that is amazing. You did yes. really good. I gave four months. I gave four wow. months. You know, get everything in order, train the next person I had coming in. You know, but it was still, it's still an emotional process. Yes. So. so. I'll support you. Reach out if you ever feel like, I don't know, if, if the devil, it, you know, has a day with you, just reach out. I sure will. <laughs> All right, y'all. This wasn't even planned. I came on to talk about something else. As you can see, the topic was group coaching blueprint challenge.com. I'm having the challenge January 24th through 28th. Y'all hop over in that. We get into all kinds of stuff. We hardly ever stay on path, but that's okay because when we go off path, it's good things like this. Thank you so much, Tava, for coming in. I'm excited to see what you build in the in the in the marketplace. I mean, I have real talk when I say this. You have a completely different glow about you. I don't know if anybody else has told you that yet. <laughs> I feel different. Like it's just the weight you lifted off of me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can tell. I love it. I love it. Thank love you. It. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. You guys have a good weekend. Blessings. All right. Let me end here on Facebook. All right. Instagram, y'all. Group coaching blueprint challenge.com. Group coaching blueprint challenge.com. It's like a blah, 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 blah. it's like a tongue twister. We're gonna spend five days together, January 24th through 28th. Get your ticket telling you now you want to get the VIP. You don't want to just get general because we don't do general. Get the VIP. If you're serious and and not just curious, just go ahead and get the VIP. Be serious about what it is you're doing. Okay. Yep. I see somebody, um, Coach Diana. Hey. Yes, you are in it. I saw your registration come in. So it's going to be a grand time, you guys. It's going to be a grand time. Anybody that has, because somebody asked me this earlier, anybody that got a general admission ticket, they wanted to know if they could upgrade to VIP. You absolutely can. Just go on the same page, groupcoachingblueprint.com, and um, grab the VIP, and then we will um, refine the difference. All right? So see you guys. Have a good weekend.